When theoretical physicist Michio Kaku dropped his surprising bombshell regarding Proxima b, the world waited with bated breath. Known for his prophetic observations on the boundaries of physics and his enthusiastic quest for the possibility of alien life, Kaku was no stranger to taking risks. But this time, his statements were not speculation. They were not projections or far-off possibilities. They were grounded, based on hard evidence, and presented with a soothing urgency that created waves in the scientific world and public awareness as well. He wasn't speculating about the existence of life. He was affirming its existence on Proxima b, a Earth-sized exoplanet around the red dwarf Proxima Centauri, a little more than four light years from us. The news swept worldwide media. TV pieces broke into prime-time programming. Twitter lit up with trending hashtags. And scientific publications hurried to confirm and explain the evidence behind Kaku's assertion. The age-old question, are we alone? Was suddenly not rhetorical. For the first time in recorded time, a top physicist, supported by first-rate observational evidence, stated that we are not alone. And not just anywhere, but next door so to speak in cosmic terms. What distinguished this revelation from decades of conjecture and fringe assertions was the basis of solid, peer-reviewed data. Proxima b had captivated astronomers for years. Situated in the habitable zone around its star, it had potential for liquid water. It was approximately the same size as Earth, and early simulations suggested a rocky composition. But there was doubt. Proxima Centauri, being a flare star, was infamous for bombarding planets within its orbit with powerful radiation. The scientists' worry was that Proxima B's atmosphere, if it ever had one, would have been stripped off, making it barren. That hypothesis had reigned supreme until the current day. Kaku's revelation was based on several observatories, notably information from the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, and the Atacama Large Millimeter Slash Submillimeter Array, ALMA. These tools, working at unprecedented accuracy, had recorded atmospheric biosignatures on Proxima b that couldn't be replicated by non-biological means. The atmosphere held a stable balance of oxygen and methane. In normal times, these gases interacted and neutralized each other. The only reason that could explain their stable presence was biological, ongoing processes were actively sustaining that equilibrium. Life wasn't merely possible. It was there. And that was only the start. JWST's infrared detectors also detected thermal anomalies, spots on the surface of Proxima b that stored heat in patterns too uniform to be explained by nature. These patterns suggested localized temperature control, something organisms, even microbial organisms, tend to cause. It was as if life on the planet had learned mechanisms to retain warmth in its environment, perhaps in the twilight zone between the hot day side and cold night side of the planet, a region called the Terminator Zone. These results by themselves would have been groundbreaking. But it was the spectroscopic scan that really made the discovery paradigm shattering. Gradual but regular changes in surface reflectivity were recorded, corresponding exactly with Proxima b's 11.2-day orbit. This oscillation replicated Earth's plant-like seasonal behavior, photosensitive life responding to light cycles. Kaku suggested that vegetation-like colonies would be present on the surface, having evolved to harness even the spotty and paltry light of Proxima Centauri. The scientific ramifications were astonishing. Earth was no longer isolated in having advanced chemical life. The atmospheric chemistry, heat dynamics, and light-sensitive surface all hinted at a dynamic biosphere. Life beyond Earth wasn't science fiction anymore, it was empirical fact. And that revolutionized everything. Culturally, spiritually, philosophically, humanity needed to catch its breath. For two millennia, we've cast our queries into the evening sky. Are we alone? Is there life out there beyond the stars? Are we alone in the universe? Those questions had informed religions, motivated empires, and spurred scientific revolutions. And now, with Kaku's announcement, one of them had a response. And it was, no, we are not alone. The idea that life arose spontaneously on a planet as foreign as Proxima b had far-reaching implications. It suggested that life wasn't a miracle, it was a process. 
a natural mechanism that occurs wherever the correct ingredients and conditions are present. That understanding rewrote the rules of biology. If life could evolve under Proxima B's radiation-drenched atmosphere, then it could appear anywhere, in sulfuric Venusian fogs, beneath Europa's ice, or in Titan's methane lakes. This find made the scientific community rethink its agenda. Proxima B was not only a scientific object, it was now a keystone. Space agencies, academia, and private research centers started advocating for bolder expeditions. New money was spent on developing tools that could conduct deeper exoplanet study. The aspiration to dispatch probes, something considered outlandish, started getting serious technical treatment. After all, if life was only four light years away, wouldn't it be mankind's highest calling to go and greet it? And as excitement increased, so did questions. What form of life existed on Proxima B? Was it microbial? Did it develop complex multicellular colonies? Did it develop senses, movement, even nascent intelligence? Kaku hesitated here. He recalled that there were no indications of technology, no radio signals or geometric forms detectable from orbit. This was almost certainly primitive life, though primitive in only terrestrial terms. The life forms could be a completely different evolutionary tree, one guided not by Earth's carbon water chemistry, but by strange biochemistry, perhaps based on silicon, sulfur, or ammonia. Yet there was a beauty to its simplicity. The deepest alien encounter wasn't a flying saucer, it was a microbial mat slowly soaking up a red sun's rays. And in the simplicity lay untold secrets. Analysis of this life might deconceal mysteries earthly biology could never solve. How universal is DNA? Are there other ways of encoding genetic information? Do alien cells have to metabolize in the presence of mitochondria? Do they tolerate radiation levels that would destroy earthly life? These questions were no longer theoretical, they were testable. It wasn't merely a scientific revolution. It was an ontological one. Human beings had long situated ourselves at the center of creation. Even as science removed Earth from the center of the universe, we held onto the idea that we were special. But Proxima be dispelled that fiction. Life hadn't occurred once. It had occurred twice. At least. And if once, why not a thousand times? Proxima B was a mirror, and it reflected to us that life is not delicate. It's mandatory. As predicted, the public response varied from wonder to crisis of existence. Church leaders convened emergency synods. Some interpreted the find as an affirmation of the hugeness of divine creation. Others grappled with the fact of alien life and planet-based teachings. But even in the midst of theological controversies, there was a unifying thread, wonder. A profound, odd appreciation that the cosmos was more complicated, more vibrant, than we had ever dared dream. Education systems themselves also changed. Biology texts were revised. Astrobiology, once an elective study, became a pillar of contemporary science courses. Students learned not only about Earth's biosphere, but the biospheres of hypothetical alien planets. Completely new fields of study came into being, xenogenetics, planetary ecology, evolutionary cosmology. Life science was no longer Earth-centered for the first time. Proxima B also sparked a new race to space, not a dominance, but a discovery race. Nations who had been behind in space exploration finally had reason to invest. Space corporations announced plans to replicate Proxima B's environment in laboratories. Biologists endeavored to develop analog ecosystems. Even philosophers entered the debate. If life is common, what does that mean for intelligence? For consciousness? If intelligence arises elsewhere, how do we communicate? And most importantly, what moral obligations do we hold to life that didn't evolve on our planet? Michio Kaku's discovery did not only verify existence, it verified purpose. It provided humanity with a new frontier, not of space, but of mind. The search for existence was no longer about substantiating we were not alone. It was about comprehending the nature of existence itself. What ties it together between stars? What form does it come in? 
How many forms of existence is the universe full of? And as the weeks went by, the understanding dawned, this was just the start. Proxima B had unlocked the door. Beyond it lay possibilities to redefine the next hundred years of exploration. The very instruments that discovered this planet, JWST, Alma, and more, were now being stretched to their limits, being asked to search further, peer deeper, examine weaker signals. Each biosignature on a different exoplanet would now be examined through a new lens. The standard had been set. As Proxima B slipped behind veils of information, telescopes shifted to other red dwarfs, Trappist-1, Luton Star, Ross-128. If one planet might support life, others must be able. And somewhere out there, perhaps, was another Proxima B, waiting to be found, one not only alive, but sentient. That hope, far but possible, is now part of humankind's shared vision. Kaku's news didn't conclude a chapter, it wrote a new one. The cosmos has spoken, silently, in chemistry, heat, and the tender planetary rhythms. It is revealed, you are not the sole child of the universe. Life breathes elsewhere. And it's our turn now to listen, to learn, to reach out. If this finding affected you as much as it affected us, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more space, science, and life beyond Earth updates. And tell us in the comments, what do you think inhabits Proxima B? And what do you think this implies for humanity's future? Thanks for watching, and keep looking up.